And welcome back to PP Simmons Radio. My name is Mike Shoesmith. You know when we see, when we see, when we heard about all of the all of the uh, the routing of the Yazidi people up into the mountain there in in, uh, in uh, Mesopotamia, now now known as Iraq, it it drew the ire of the dictator in the White House, and he 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 got up there with his fist waving and said, "There is a genocide going on," and. Now we have got to put an end to that, and 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 you know, never mind the fact that Christians have been have been uh, have been routed for months now over there by the ISIS folks, the ISIL folks, the IS folks. There's news. There's news out of uh, Saudi Arabia today, by the way. The the the, the king over there is saying that uh, the uh, the Islamic terrorists they will be on uh, on European soil within a month and American soil within two months. By the way. But anyway, we we don't want to digress from the actual topic at hand here. Uh, there was a genocide, uh, potential genocide, going to happen on the mountain there in Iraq of the Yazidis, and everybody was concerned. And the word genocide being thrown about here and thrown about there, and people were running to their dictionaries. What is a genocide? What are they doing to the Yazidis? And well, I mean, let's go to the dictionary here. Genocide is the deliberate and systematic extermination of a national, racial, political, or cultural group. So yes, if the uh, ISIS folks had managed to wipe out all of the Yazidis on the mountain and there was no trace of them anywhere, then yes, that would uh, qualify as genocide. But guess what, folks? There has been a genocide going on, an attempted genocide going on in another part of the world for a, a decade now or more and that uh, part of the world is south africa and there is a there is a, a atrocities going on in, in south africa on a on a gigantic scale and uh, we here at pp simmons we have uh, been able to reach someone from that area of the world and uh, she has been active in exposing this attempted genocide going on in south africa for a decade now. Uh, her name is Karen Ann Smith. Uh, she is an expat South African living in Texas. Uh, her family fled the Civil War in Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe, after her parents uh, had been severely injured, and uh, they moved uh, to Southwest Africa, which is now called Namibia, and then left there for South Africa when the fighting in Angola spilled over. Uh, so a lot of fighting going on in Africa, and uh, especially South Africa now, uh, her family has all, all, all the members of her family have suffered attacks by these people. It really is a tragic story. Uh, her her, her uh, parents, they were farmers in South Africa, uh, and they were attacked by AK-47 wielding gangs down there twice in three years. Uh, and uh, sad, uh, sadly, her father died uh, recently, last September, in fact, so it'll be almost a year ago, as a result of this. Uh, Karen, uh, Karen has been an active uh, uh, participant in calling for the world's attention to the white genocide in South Africa for at least 10 years. Karen Ann Smith, welcome to P.P. Simmons Radio. Thank you, Mike, and thank you for giving me a chance to draw attention to these atrocities. Listen, you're calling this a genocide in South Africa. Is there really a, an attempted genocide going on there? Oh, certainly. Certainly, Mike, and there's no question about that. Genocide Watch, which is a, um American institu organization, went to South Africa and studied the situation there about 18 months ago. And Gregory Stanton, who is the head of Genocide Watch, has raised the genocide risk against whites in South Africa to six on a scale of eight which is just before it happens. And he has said that whites must absolutely refuse to hand in their firearms because they have been confiscated by the right. ANC government, and they must arm themselves and stand up and fight. So a genocide is without question happening there. Run the numbers by us here. Uh, what kind of... Uh, now, I did a little research this morning. The murder rate against whites... Now, whites make up, what, 6% of the population there? Approximately yes. And and what is the what are the murder numbers over there against whites against blacks over there? I mean, if we're going to talk about a genocide, people need to die. What do the death numbers look like over there, uh, Karen? 
whites against blacks is practically unheard of. There are them, I'm not denying it. There are white, mur- white on black murders, but the majority of murders there are black on black or black on white. And there are 52 murders a day. Now, what you have to understand, Mike, is that South Africa is very little bigger than Texas. Mm. So if there were 52 murders a day in Texas, there would be an outcry of note. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what are are the percentages on that, though? We have 6% of of the population is white. Now, we have, uh, have, uh, is there a disproportionate number of whites being killed? Hugely. Hugely. Um, I don't have the exact figures with me at this moment, but yes, it is totally disproportionate because the, the white population is about three, 7% of the population. And the, the black and white mur- the murders against them um, are much higher than that percentage. And, and the murders of farmers, it has been said that, the, that being a farmer in South Africa is the world's most dangerous occupation. Wow. Being a white farmer, yes, being a white farmer. Well, talk about the talk about the job uh, the uh, job situation over there. Is it is it true that uh, whites are are prohibited from uh, acquiring new employment over there? Well, essentially, yes. People will tell you no, but the, the, a law has recent well, not a law, but a, an edict has an edict. been given recently right. in in the town councils and the municipalities and. Um, government service that if a position is vacant leave it vacant do not employ whites what's going on with the farming situation over there now the it, in uh, in the old days we'll say uh, i'm not sure what decades they, they were but uh, the whites have owned owned the uh the farms now what do we have going on here today we have blacks going in and making claims on this property yes absolutely um they passed a law in 1995 or so called the Land Redistribution Act, which said that if a black person had any claim whatsoever to a piece of land, in other words, if his ancestors in the 1600s had grazed a goat on that land, he had a legitimate claim to a farmer's property. Now, that farmer has been on that land for generations right. and developed it from nothing to what it is today. So once a land claim was in on your farm, you could neither sell it nor sell anything off of it. You couldn't take even your air conditioner out until the land claim was settled. Now, the theory was that you would get reasonable um, restitution for your land, mm-hmm. but there are farmers there whose land was taken away from them 15 years ago and are still waiting for the payment. But those farms today are derelict. There is no farming happening. Everything has been destroyed. So, okay, so you did, you just answered my next question. The 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 uh, the, the land is being taken away from the uh, from the white farmers who have, have made something of the land, but nothing else is being made of the land. They're just taking it just for the sake of taking it. Absolutely, absolutely. And the problem there is that South Africa used to export food by the billions of tons. They are now having to import food because there are approximately 3,000 farmers left in South Africa, white farmers. And even those are under threat because they are considering now a law that says that every farmer must give 50% of his land to his laborers. What, uh, Karen? What, what are you? What are you? At, what are you looking for here? What is the response from the world community here that you're looking for exactly? I want them to take note. I want them to realize that there are very few white people in South Africa, and they need help. They need to be called refugees. The world needs to realize that a genocide is taking place, and make it possible for these people to go somewhere else, because mm. the world does not want them. And, and the majority, 800,000 of them that are living in abject poverty in shacks built of cardboard boxes and road signs, don't have the money to leave, even, even if there was somewhere that they could go. They need to be classified as refugees and allowed to leave, should they so wish.
and the end result would be a, an all black society. There would there, this would be this would be uh, they would, the white population in South Africa will have been driven out of the land. Yes, but at least they'd be alive, and that, right. that is exactly what the blacks want. Wow. The the president is singing a song called "Bring Me My Machine Gun to Kill the Boers," which are white people. Uh -huh. He sings it every day. So now, before the parliament goes into session, they sing that song. They do not want the whites there, but nobody else wants them either. Yeah. You know, Mike, Rwanda is going to happen there unless somebody wakes up and helps these people. Yeah. It is going to happen. I can't get my mother out. I cannot yeah. get her to the States. My daughter and her family are here applied for asylum, which they almost certainly will not get and will be deported back to South Africa. Wow. Now, my daughter has been mugged. My sister was gang raped. My brother was a policeman. He was dragged out of his car, beaten up and left for dead. My mother has been attacked. My youngest brother was shot in the leg on the farm attack and has got tuberculosis in his bone marrow from that. Um, the hospitals there... Well, you take your own bed, your own food, your own medicines. Why do you even go? I cannot get my mother out because she's old and she doesn't have money because there's a claim on her farm, so she can't sell it. Wow. And that's her worldly goods. I can't get her here. So every time the phone rings or every time I open an email, my heart just stops because I'm waiting for that call that says, I no longer have a mom. Oh, my gosh. You know? And I have got lots of friends there, lots of friends, who some of them can leave. They already have the visas and things they could leave, but they feel they can do more good there helping, but they know they can get out. If it really goes south, they can jump on a plane and leave. Yeah. Now, the, the others, the others who are hopeless, it is snowing in South Africa this winter, an unheard of thing in most of South Africa. Wow. And these people are dying of cold and starvation mm. because they don't have running water. They don't have electricity. They don't have clothes. Because if we don't do it now, it's going to be too late. Because there is a new face on the political scene in South Africa. And his name is Julius Malema. Uh -huh. And he used to be the, the ANC Youth League leader. And he has studied under Robert Mugabe in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And his thing is nationalize everything. I mean, his, his um, poster said the honeymoon is over for whites. Wow. And Yes. Now, he is a big voice in, in South African politics. And because unemployment is over 30% amongst the black youth, they follow him because he has promised them everything. Uh -huh. Everything. We'll nationalize the mines split the money amongst the people, etc., etc. Now, there's a call at the moment for Jacob Zuma, who is the present president, to step down. He has a standard three education, which is grade five, and is a goat, was a goat herd. Right. Malema, who is going for his replacement, failed everything, including woodwork in school. Right. But this is the pol politicians that we have in charge there. Now, if he gets in... That's the end for the whites. And it's coming. It is coming because he recently got 20 seats in Parliament, his party. Mm -hmm. And they have already brought Parliament to a stop, burnt the building, all kinds of things. It's coming that he's going to get in. And, and then it's too late. The world must wake up now before that happens. Karen, give us a, uh, a rundown of the, uh, the religious landscape over there. The, the white people, are they Christian? They are. They are mostly uh, uh, Dutch Reformed. The Afrikaners are Dutch Reformed, but all, all Christian religions are, are represented in South Africa. Now, the black people will tell you that they are Christians mm -hmm. and they believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they believe in their witch doctors who, that right. are called Sangomas over there. Right. I don't know how you put those two things together. It seems, it, it seems irreconcilable, doesn't it? Voodoo with Christianity. Absolutely. And the witch doctors, um, AIDS is hugely prevalent in Africa. Right. And in South Africa, the numbers are enormous. The, in, the, 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 the blacks, it's, 
one, one in five maybe doesn't have it. And the wow. witch doctors are telling their people who come to them for a cure for AIDS, they're telling them that the cure for AIDS is to rape a virgin. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Back, wait a minute. back this truck up a little bit here. Did you say one in five uh, does not have AIDS? Approximately, yes. My, my figure might be wrong. It might be two. But, uh, yes. It, that is, that is, that is a shocking statistic. I had no idea that the, it was that prevalent. It is. It is huge there. And the problem is that when the ANC took over from the white government there, they said there was no such thing as AIDS. Wow. So you must eat beetroot uh -huh. and garlic, and that will, that will keep you free of it. So for years and wow. years and years, it was denial, and nothing right. was done about it. Right. Now, now, they're going to the witch doctors, the voodoo priests over there, and what are the voodoo, yes. what are the voodoo priests telling them to do besides kill white they, people? They are telling them that the answer to the cure for AIDS is to rape a virgin, mm -hmm. which equates in South Africa to a baby, right. which further equates to a white baby. Thank you. And the rapes of white babies there the statistics for that are shocking. These children are killed. They are maimed. They are scarred for life, mm -hmm. should they live. Mm -hmm. And those that survive that, the witch doctors make muti, which is uh, cures for okay. everything, and right. they use body parts. Body parts make the muti stronger and the cure better. So they kidnap black and white children. Wow. For their body parts, for muti, and this is in a Christian nation. Well, I mean, they say they believe in Jesus, and they're running around to all these voodoo priests and so on. Uh, you know, it's no different than the than the Muslim. Uh, you know, we run into comments from people from Muslims all the time. Well, we believe in Jesus too. You know, and we're and we're thinking, okay, well, which Jesus is that? I mean, it's not exactly. it's not the Jesus that's telling you to do the kinds of of you know Jesus did not did not uh, did not invite us to the to the horror show that we're seeing over there in Iraq right now, and uh, Jesus is not inviting us to the horror show we're seeing in South Africa with the rape and murder and killing of whites and and babies. I mean, that is not the Jesus that I worship. We are not. There is a war of ideology going on here, and that is not uh, Jesus Christ of the Bible. No, no. And, and to go back to the murder figures, I have some figures in front of me. Yeah. In July 2014, there were 2,475 um, murders black on white. Mm -hmm. In January 2036, February 2113, March 2210. Wow. April 2289. This is in a, a country little bigger than Texas. Uh -huh. And these numbers are over 2,000 black on white murders every month. Every month. Shock. And you ask me, is this a genocide? Right. Can there be any doubt that this is genocide? Well, there's certainly an attempt going on there in South Africa to wipe out the white population. And you're calling for the world community to accept them in as, as refugees. Yes, I am. Because there have been cases sent to the International Criminal Court to, to take note of this. They ignore it. They, they, we have made cries to the governments of the world who don't listen because it's not politically correct. They, the, the world governments, were anti-apartheid. They enforced sanctions against South Africa, which brought about the end of apartheid. I am sure, although there is nothing in documented to say this, but I am sure that the governments of the world cannot now turn around and say they made a mistake. So they are ignoring it. Karen Smith, uh, tell us uh, how people can reach out and, uh, and make their voices, put their names uh, of concern on this. Uh, where can they go? Well, there are a couple of places that need donations. Um, I, I, I have come to a conclusion after a long time of activism that petitions and those kind of things are absolutely useless. Right. You do them and nobody pays attention to them. Mm -hmm. um, there are places in South Africa where 
white people are helping white people. There is a Makadesh ministry where three farmers in the country have given their land, their time. They are building um, houses for white people, homeless white people to go, to be taught to raise their own food, to have a plot of their own to raise it on, and to be given blue-collar skills that they can use in barter and trade with the other whites. Now, these people are in desperate need of funds Mm -hmm. to build these places in a hurry. So those are the only things that I can think of that can help, and I will give you the details that you could put on your website. I guess uh, what we could happen is that they could just email us, ppsimmons at live.com, and we could forward information to them. Now, I just want to emphasize, Karen, that uh, you agreed to come on our show. You're not making any money from this. None of the donation money goes to you. No, no, it doesn't, doesn't go anywhere near me. It goes straight to South Africa. Right. Well, listen, uh, people can email me, ppsimmons at live.com, for contact info. Look in the, uh, in the description section of this, uh, of this video. Of this article, this will be go. This will go out everywhere around the world. We are syndicated to uh, to uh, dozens of websites and so on. And so the contact info will be available on how to reach out and help these South Africans help the genocide in South Africa, folks. There is a legitimate genocide going on there, an attempted one, anyhow. Uh, Karen Ann Smith, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you very much, Mike. All right. You've been listening to PP Simmons Radio. My name is Mike Schuessman. We'll talk to you next time.